Hey everyone, it's time for Joe Canto. Welcome people, my name is Joseph Magdalena, a.k.a. Joe Mag, and we're here to talk about singing. Welcome to episode 5, How to Practice. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to combine the elements of episode 3, the warm-up, and episode 4, the five vowels, to come up with a simple practice routine. Then I'm going to give you some self-monitoring tips and share with you a few tricks regarding vocal first aid. Now, what do I mean about vocal first aid? Well, probably the most common question I get from singers who would like to study with me is, what can I do to sing better? Particularly on those nights when I don't feel like I am in good voice. And they usually go on to explain that, say, uh, they're getting over a cold, or uh, they've had bad allergies, or been smoking too much, or tired, etc. Now, it's a great question to ask, because as a professional musician, I often have the same issues as everyone else does, but I don't have the luxury of staying home and sitting it out that night. I got to go to work. I mean, like, usually I'm talking four-hour shifts worth of singing. Now, there is a point where the vocal cords can get so inflamed, so red and swollen that they simply will not vibrate. We're talking total laryngitis here. And yeah, if you're that sick, if it's that extreme, you probably shouldn't be out anyway. But if it's borderline, I have some recommendations for some common over-the-counter counter medications that I'll share with you later. But for most run-of-the-mill stuff, a little sniffle, a little bit of redness, you can probably pull it off just by taking the time to warm up the voice properly. Depending on how bad it is, how stuffy you are, how red the cords are, it may take a little longer than normal to get it going, but the voice will work. Believe me, I've had days where I felt lousy. Like I was working so hard just to keep the sound going, like pushing a boulder up a hill. And despite my discomfort, I've had some of my best performances. And you know what? The audience never knew I was sick. I never told them. They didn't need to know. I just sucked it up and went out there. If you do these exercises regularly, you'll be able to do that too. Okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to do a bunch of demonstrating first, without much explanation. I'm going to rush through it to save time, skipping a bunch of scales as I go. For one thing, I don't want to bore you. Also, the pitches don't matter anyway, because depending upon the range of your individual particular voice, you will start and end on different notes than I would. So don't try to sing along as I do this. This is just for the sake of demonstrating the general outline of the vocal exercise routine. It'll take maybe two or three minutes and afterwards I'll give you a bit more detail as to what I was doing, what I was looking for. Then we'll talk about what to do when you're not feeling well. Coincidentally, as it turns out, I'm having a lousy singing week right now. Uh, terrible allergies. It's all right though. So much the better. This will be even more authentic, even more relevant. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, the exercises. First, quick review of episode three, the warm-up, getting the buzz going. First, there's the hum. Hmm. 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 A few of those. Then, some half scales. Start in the middle, mouth closed, 
Go down first, not too far. Like that. Then start in the middle, go back up. A little over your break. Stop there. Next, same thing, but with open mouth, tongue down and out, stretch out the jaw if necessary. I'm going to stretch out the range of the voice a tiny bit, but not much. This is still mostly about getting the buzz going. I'm going to start from where I left off, high to low. then low to high. <laughs> then rest a minute and reflect. How did it go? Did I slide through my break easily or did it crack like an 11 year old boy? I hope to talk a bit more about breaks another time. But one of the reasons I like to re exercise in that register right off the bat is because it gives me a good gauge as to how easy or hard this is going to be for me today. Uh, if it's really fighting me, I might have to run a few more reps or add a couple of lip trills. Remember them? <laughs> Okay, next, the five vowels, or if you prefer, the warm-up part two. Same pattern, starting with E. I also like to bring in a consonant as well, right about now. Something easy at the very tip of the tongue that doesn't get in the way of the vowel, but provides a bit of attack. I prefer to use the D or the D sound, every other note. I'll show you. High to low. Dee 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 dee. Now skip a little bit. Dee 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 dee. Next vowel. A. Low to high. Day, 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 then we move to the lip vowels. Next vowel, O, low to high. Do, 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 do. Do 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 And then finally, the oo sound from high to low. Do 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 do. Okay, that's the whole thing in a nutshell. The super abbreviated version, of course, that took, what, like five minutes, maybe less, without the talking. But to do it properly, you should take your time 
and do it chromatically, a half step at a time. Still, even with that, the whole thing takes maybe 15 to 20 minutes, less if you cheat. I usually do it in the car on my way to work. Now, if I were practicing at home and had no singing gig to go to, I might do more. Uh, perhaps I'd take each individual vowel all the way up and all the way down. Or maybe run a different pattern entirely, a slightly longer one like 5151. Five, I'll show you. Even then, maybe you're adding five more minutes to it. Now, if this were a vocal lesson, one might exercise the vocal cords for as much as 35 minutes while your teacher does this on the piano. It gives you the pitches and your teacher has something to do. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting your teacher is useless here. It's just that I already told you, you really don't need a piano to do this. It just takes a little longer that way. But hopefully your teacher will take the extra time to observe you and give their opinion of which vowels they felt were your weakest and suggest how you might do them better and spend some extra time giving you more reps on those. Then you'd work some musical repertoire for a bit and before you knew it, you, you've had a standard 50 minute to an hour long lesson. The point is, whether you call it a warm-up, a practice, or a full-blown lesson, it's all the same. The only difference is the amount of time spent exercising. So, quick review. Part 1 is the hum, establishing the buzz, getting the vocal cords stimulated and vibrating, getting loose. Then, part 2 the heavier lifting, the five vowels, E, A, A, O, U. I regularly do up to down to up to down to up, respectively. You could do the opposite. There's no law. They're just exercises. So let's get into some more detail here. The self-monitoring part of the practice. What am I looking for when I practice? Well, I am focused on making pure vowel sounds. And what do I mean by pure? Well, I'll give you an example. Take the E sound. Solid, right? That's what I'd want up and down all throughout my exercises. But what if I was doing long sets of these exercises, chromatically, the proper way, and I found myself running out of breath? Now the goal is not to see how many you can do in one breath. Generally you do several, you take your breaths as you go, as needed. I mean, I, n I never even count how many I do in a row. But if I found myself constantly feeling winded, I might be concerned. So the first thing I would question well, maybe I'm just tired. It could happen. If so, no big deal. Nothing I can do about that right now. Uh, the next thing I would ask myself is, uh, is the sound breathy? That would suggest that the vocal cords were not making efficient use of the air. I'll give you an example. I did the E sound again. Solid is a breathy version. You see, the muscles attached to the vocal cords are like a valve. Not only do they control the pitch, but they also control how much air gets through and thus how much sound in terms of volume. If I'm running out of air, too fast. I might need to redouble my concentration on the first couple of tongue vowels, E and A, 
or do a couple of lip trills to give me the kind of back resistance that helps refocus the voice. <laughs> Here's something else I'm listening for while I exercise. Sound versus noise. For example, I might hear some static, some weird overtones mixed in from time to time. I'll demonstrate. Those are solid. Bad. Now, sometimes the cause of the noise is some random bits of phlegm floating around in there. And if that's the case, that can't be helped. But if it's not, I would be worried about possible grinding of my vocal cords. Grinding is, oh, what's the technical term, mm, bad for you. Uh, doing it a lot can potentially cause vocal nodes. Now, nodes are little calluses that sometimes form along the vocal cords. As you can imagine, these calluses can interfere with the free vibration of the cords. Most professional singers will deal with them at one time or another. It's an occupational hazard. They can be caused by environmental factors, like severe allergies, or living in dry climates, like deserts. Sometimes they call that Vegas voice. They can be caused by severe colds or flu, or personal bad habits like smoking, or bad singing habits like belting or growling when we sing. Usually, they come and go with normal rest, but the condition can become chronic. What happens is the vocal cords get irritated and inflamed. Your body creates phlegm to coat them that causes you to cough to expel the phlegm, which irritates the vocal cords even more, and so on. Eventually, the vocal cords form calluses to protect themselves. It can get so bad that it may require surgery to remove them. Surgery that, I should add, is not always successful. Julie Andrews' singing career was ended by unsuccessful vocal note surgery. And those of you who've heard me sing know I almost never belt or grind my vocal cords. It can be impressive for dramatic emphasis to grunt out a musical phrase once in a while. But I find the rise or applause I might get out of a crowd from doing that is simply not worth jeopardizing my overall vocal health. So, I'm looking for the freest, easiest tone I can produce. And if I hear any random funny stuff creeping into the tone, I might want to rest a bit, or at least dial back some of the mass and power that day. The motto is, don't force, don't push, don't hurt. Also, I'm listening for my vibrato. I'm looking for a natural free wave. Hmm. <laughs> Not too slow, not too fast. Too fast sounds artificial, like I'm forcing it. Too slow means the vocal cords are not vibrating freely. I'm still not loose. Time to go back and do some more buzzing. Finally, and this is very important, we have to concentrate on keeping the buzz going as we do the vowels. That's right the sound that comes out of our nose. And here's where the first aid comes in. If you're particularly stuffy on a given day, you might find that keeping the buzz going is a bit of a struggle. If you're like me, and you have to sing that day, like they have a gun at your head, well, fortunately, many of the same medications you'd use when you have a cold to allow you to breathe also work for your voice. Now, I like to buy the individual over-the-counter generic drugs in pill form, as opposed to the multi-drug liquid cocktails. I do that for one thing because they're cheaper, and because the combination drugs often contain antihistamines, 
which I don't like for lots of reasons. They make you sleepy, etc. But for occasional first aid, some kind of decongestant like Sudafed can open up your sinuses a bit. If your vocal cords are a little bit inflamed that day, maybe an EDSED, you know, like a Tylenol or an Advil, a Leave, Aspirin, they'll all help to bring the uh, swelling down some. Also, make sure you have some kind of cough suppressant in your medicine cabinet at all times. I recommend something that contains dextromethorphan, sometimes called DM for short, at least 20 milligrams. As I said before, there's nothing more harmful to the voice than a hacking cough, so it's worth it to invest a few dollars in these simple remedies for when you're feeling under the weather. Okay, one more detail about the vowels. They are not linear. Rather, they are cyclical. E, A, A, O, U, E, A, A, O, U. I could describe in linguistic detail why that is true, but for now, just keep that in the back of your memory banks. For the sake of practicing, if I'd gone through the five vowels and felt I was still having a difficult time keeping the sound focused, I might find it useful, after I finished the U sound, to return to the E sound and go around again. At least the E and A tongue vowels one more time. Or I might switch to the optional English tongue vowels for variety's sake. Instead of E, substitute I as in did the second time. Instead of a, substitute e as in dead. It doesn't matter which tongue vowels you use the second time around. What's most important is that tongue vowels in general help you to refocus and center the sound. So, the goal is get a good buzz going and keep it going through the vowels. Let me say that again. You get a good buzz going and keep it going through the vowels. Now, if you do this every day, or as close to that as you reasonably can, this will all click for you more often than not. If you're having a bad day, there's a few things you can try, but don't kill yourself. Keep it brief. You don't want to overdo it. At least that's my philosophy. Run these exercises 15 to 20 minutes tops, and then you've done what you can. Don't worry about it. Just go sing. So, I've shown you how I practice, given some tips as to what to listen for, even shared some medical advice. I could go on, but I think I'll stop here. Now, there may be some more Joe Canto episodes in the future. Believe me, there are plenty of other topics I wanted to cover, just didn't get around to this time. For example, uh, range, or my philosophy regarding breathing. Uh, I'm even thinking about picking a few of the great American standards and giving a musical presentation of how some of these vocal techniques we just described can be practically applied. Does that sound like something you might be interested in? Let me know. For now, my friends, let me say that I really hope you've enjoyed my five-part presentation. I know I've learned a lot and have had a lot of fun doing it. Please, Share this with all your friends, and hopefully I'll also see you all back at Martunis in San Francisco very soon. Until then, my name is Joseph Magdalena. Thanks for spending some time with me. Keep smiling and keep singing.